Did you know that Doctor Who has been sneaking time paradoxes underneath your nose while you've all been watching? Well, today I take a look at a few time paradoxes Doctor Who created without you even knowing. These paradoxes will only be in the newest series of Doctor Who, everything published after 2005. This is because I haven't seen the classic series yet, because I don't have access to it. I mean, I could get access to them, but then I'd have to go to the shop and ask if they have any in store, and of course they don't, because who does? And even if they do, that would all mean a lot of human interaction for me, and well, we all know what I think about human interaction. Ugh. This all means a lot of spoilers for Doctor Who seasons 1 to 9, season 10 not included, it's not out on Netflix yet, after 2005. So if you haven't seen it yet, well first of all why I'm watching a video about it on YouTube, and second, what have you been doing with your life so far? Go watch it, gosh darn it, watch it! Paradox number 1, episode 11 of season 5, The Lodger. The whole episode is paradox in itself. Somehow the Doctor gets himself thrown out of the TARDIS while Amy remains inside of it. And for some reason, the TARDIS had a problem landing and materialising. So the Doctor has to go to the top of a roof to locate a spaceship because that spaceship is what keeps his TARDIS from materialising. Then the Doctor passes by a shop window with a sticky note in it that says where he has to go to get his problem fixed. It was written by Amy, yet she insists that she hasn't written it. Yet. He then goes to the, to the address of the spaceship, he fixes his problem, the TARDIS materialises and he meets Amy again. He then gives the sticky note to Amy and tells her to post it in the shop window where he originally found it, before he found it. Here is the problem, where did he even get the information from in the first place? The address, I mean, like, he got it from the shop window, of course, and the shop window got it from Amy, but Amy got it from the doctor, and doctor got it from the shop window. I mean, the, the information has no starting point, it is a paradox. Boom. Paradox. Paradox number two, River Song's name. Just a, just a whole deal. Okay, hear me out. Amy is the mother of Melody Pond. Melody Pond was a name she got from her childhood friend, Melody. Now, just after Melody Pond was born, she was sent back in time to become that childhood friend that Amy named her after. Now, here is the weird part. Where did the name River Song or Melody Pond even come from? I mean, Amy got it from a childhood friend, which was also her baby, and her baby slash her childhood friend got it from Amy. The information has no starting point nor end point. Boom. Paradox. Yes, I am going to say boom paradox every time. Third paradox, the season 5 finale, the Pandorica opens and the Big Bang. Honestly, I have no idea where to even begin on this one. But here I go. The season 5 finale is just a mess that doesn't make any sense in my eyes because of the ways that Doctor Who handles time and time paradoxes. But there are a few things that outshine the others, and it is when the Doctor uses his Time Vortex Manipulator. First, he travels back in time to give Rory his sonic screwdriver and tells him what to do to release the Doctor from the Pandorica. The Doctor then knows how to release himself from the Pandorica because Rory told him, but Rory only knows what to do because the Doctor told him. The information has no beginning and no end, so boom, paradox. The Doctor also does a few unnecessary things with his Vortex Manipulator but I don't have the time nor the will to go through it all. Basically every time he uses the damn thing he creates a paradox. Paradox number 4. The 10th Doctor defeats the Daleks of Manhattan. 
twice. I must admit, my memory is a little vague on this topic. Because Netflix has removed all David Tennant area episodes from well, Netflix, it's been some time since I last saw it, but I will do my best. So in the season 6 finale, Doomsday, the 10th Doctor defeats a bunch of Daleks that has been working on an invasion towards the Earth for years. He defeats the Daleks, avoids the invasion and sends the Daleks to another dimension. However, in an episode that comes out later, called Daleks in Manhattan, we meet surprise surprise Daleks in Manhattan, the same Daleks we met in season 6 finale. Now, this is before they had started to invade Earth, they were still planning the attack. The problem here is that the Doctor fights and beats the Daleks both times. Both. That, that would be the equivalent of me killing my friend now, then going back in time to kill him when he was a baby again. It, it doesn't work. Boom. Paradox. Again, detailed information is not clear here, so there might have been some tiny detail that avoided the whole paradox, but I'll stick with it for now. And finally, paradox number five. Blink. Everyone loves Blink. Blink is cool. Blink is the first episode we get to meet the Weeping Angels, and it has gone down as one of the best Doctor Who episodes of all time. However, I don't mean to ruin anything for you, but the whole episode is a paradox. Just a, just a whole thing. So this random girl I don't even remember the name of, gets messages from the Doctor through time that he is stuck in 1960 and that the TARDIS is stuck in 2007. She then has to go to his TARDIS and send it back to 1960 so that he is no longer stuck in 1960. I mean, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but that's the basic idea of the episode. So the reason the Doctor contacts this girl that I don't even remember the name of from 1960 is because at the end of the episode she stumbles upon the Doctor before he was stuck in 1960 and tells him that when he gets stuck in 1960, because he will, that he has to contact her and how to contact her. So the Doctor tells the girl how to save him and the girl tells the Doctor what he has to say to her to save him. The information has no beginning and no end and thus, once again, boom! Paradox baby! Yeah, that was 5 Doctor Who paradoxes you probably missed while watching Doctor Who. If you did in fact notice them, then uh, applause for you. I am either very stupid or you are very observant. If you guys want a part 2 of this video, you can let me know by commenting in the comment section below. I, I will probably make one regardless of your opinions, but uh, I mean no one is going to comment anyways. If you guys liked what you saw in this video, you should not check out my channel. I don't do this type of video very often. I mean, there's no point in promoting myself if you guys are not going to be interested. I do have a few videos on Doctor Who though, but they are terrible, like embarrassingly terrible. Please don't check them out. Don't forget to vote for your fairy element in the monthly element contest down in the comment section. Who knows, maybe your fairy element will be the next element of the month. If there's one thing that bothers me about Doctor Who these days, it's the overuse of the bootstrap paradox in the plot. I mean, we saw it all the time in this video, we saw it with Blink, we saw it with River Song's name, there's even a whole 12th Doctor episode dedicated to the bootstrap paradox. Like, BBC, stop playing with time like it's a toy and give us something that makes sense. Jeez.